Sharky, man. There you go. Something crazy has happened. Doggies, there's a school of doggies, so it'd be so cool hey, if we land a doggy. Big bull shark. Literally traveled a thousand miles. Oh, yes! Look at the size of it! We've just finished at this island and our next island is about 20 nautical miles north. So we'll see you once we get there. No, 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 no. Just pulled up at this little spot here. There's bait fish everywhere. Fran's got a little popper out and bang, straight on. It's a big fish fighting deep and dirty. I definitely like it. Oh, big fish, eh? Holy moly, Fran. Oh, it's a huge golden trevally. Yes. Good job, Fran. That's huge. Big golden trevally. All right. Nice one. Let him leave, huh? Release him, Fran. Woo! That was awesome. <laughs> Go, Fran. Get him in the boat. Yeah. Hold him up. Yes. Woo! Awesome. <laughs> Nice. So we're just navigating through these reefs and we've spotted this sand cave. It only stands about oh, two meters tall, if that, a meter and a half. A few birds on it, but we're going to go set up and have lunch there. See if we can't spear something around this cave. We've made it ashore. Beautiful sand cave all to ourselves. This is going to be a bit of a brunch. We've got some potatoes we cooked up last night. And this queenie that Fran just caught, they're yeah, Fran's favorite eating fish. So we're gonna cut him up nice and fine. Bit of lemon squeezed on top. And here's Fran doing her best to catch her a little bit more. Just gonna throw a mask on, see if I can swim around here and find a crayfish. So. So far on this trip, we've been out here a week. We haven't eaten the same thing twice, but we're living from the ocean. So we've had mud crabs, we've had spider conch, coral trout, Spanish mackerel, red emperor. The thing that's missing is a crayfish. So hopefully we can find one now. Boy, it's really nice, hey? Eh? But no crayfish, no crayfish. Queenie ceviche cracker. A really good. And the sun's come out for us on our sand cave, but we're now finished up lunch here. We're moving to hopefully find somewhere to set up camp for the night or maybe a couple of days. Yes, it's a coral trout. Oh, it's a beauty. Look at that. Whoa, what a popper, friend. <laughs> yes. And ahoy. I just found another tropical island to set up camp on for a couple of days. We're gonna have a bit of a look around and see if it suits us, but from afar, Looks like a white sandy beach, crystal clear water. Looks like a good spot. Some sort of wreckage that's washed up on the beach here. Just having a walk around the island. It's crazy what you find, but I certainly didn't expect to find this missile. What is this? <laughs> a bobsled for the Jamaican bobsled team. All right, we're just wrapping up day seven, which obviously means a week out here living out of 
Where is she? 17 foot salty did go. We've got 200 litres of fuel sitting up the front, which is obviously heaps. But we have managed to get on the plane, which is good. It was really kind of like the make or break of this adventure was whether we'd be able to get on the plane or not. So that's good, although we have chewed a lot more fuel than we anticipated. We do have another drum of fuel getting dropped for us on one of the islands just a little bit further north from here. The other thing as far as tucker goes, we have one either potato, sweet potato or corn ration for the night. And then we've just got to literally live off the ocean for the rest of it. And with no ice, no cold storage, no refrigeration. So if you catch a fish in the morning, you've got to be really clever about how you're going to conserve that if you want to eat that at night time or the next days. On sunset, all these birds come in and they kind of just do a tough lap around the island out here and then come in and find their nest to roost up. Out there and then coming in here. So cool. Got that fire roaring at the moment there. What we've been enjoying doing is lighting it, getting it burning really, really hot. And then you get that good coal base, whack it all down, and then you can cook with the grill straight over the top of the fire. And then once dinner's done, light it back up again. Look at this. Okay. That's an entire, like a goby, a bottom dwelling fish. I guarantee any fisherman would not use that for bait or something that resembled that, but that's what this trout smashed. He'll sit like this, like a hole in the sand and then he'll sit out the front of it like that. If he sees you coming, he'll go down and bury in his hole. Obviously didn't see that trout coming. Right, we've got a pretty good solid hole base down there at the moment. That's like an oven down there. Whole trout, nothing fancy about it. Just goes straight on top. And the best tip for this style of beach cooking is just patience. You just gotta have that steady coal base, let it cook, whether it takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes, just let it go. As soon as it starts roaring, you get a fire going there, you're just gonna burn the outside, so. We'll give him a bit of time and then flip him over. That's the final product of the fish. The crispy skin peels off. Then you've got that beautiful white flesh. Nice. All right, we're having a bit of a lay day today. Pretty exhausted after yesterday. And as you can see, the weather's come in a bit. So, take two on the garlic and butter naan bread. Um, feedback from the last one was it was a little bit too salty, believe it or not. We're gonna have another crack at it. So, recipe number one, flour. Ingredient number one, I should say. And then once we're done with our bread here, this is our leftover bluefin trevally from yesterday. So that's all the meat that's come off it. What we do to preserve it, we squeeze a lemon or two all over it. And the idea there being that should kill all the bad shit that forms in it. Um, I don't know if that works, but I do know when you squeeze a lemon in your hand, it really, really stings, so hopefully that counts as something. This time, just a pinch of salt, and quite literally, just a pinch. Oh, it's about two pinches. Two pinches. I'm gonna need a bit of water as the third ingredient. All right, there we go. That's what it's starting to look like. Break in half. Half for me, half for Fran. Looking good. Time for them to go on the grill. Give them about 10 minutes and see how they're looking, ready for a flip. Now the secret ingredient of the garlic and butter naan bread is the butter. Bluefin trevally on top. Whole thing at once. It's really hot. Is it? Yeah. Well, it sounded a bit crunchy. Mm, perfect. Cooked to perfection, would you say? Die to die, It's day eight or nine for us out here. Island hopping for two months camping, trying to get to the tip of Australia. Uh, today we're heading out to a group of reefs that ever since I was a kid, I'd heard about them spoken about as if they were sort of the promised land. You know, dad and the old boys used to speak about always thought it'd only be possible on a charter boat. But today we're gonna attempt to try and get out there. It's gonna be some big fish, so we'll see you out there. We're out here off the edge of the Great Barrier Reef, off the continental shelf. 
Been trolling about five minutes and we've hooked something absolutely huge. Really big here. Far oh. out. That is huge. It's going to take me a while. That's all right. We've got a while. This could be a really big doggy. No! No! That was so big. Yeah, unfortunately that fish was just too big for us. Good sign though, so we're gonna keep trolling along this outside edge. It's pretty surreal being out here off the drop off in the little boat. Um, hopefully we have some more action for you. Stay posted. Oh, good oh. sharky mackerel. Not as big, we were, we were all set for another 50 kilo dog, so we gave it hell. But um, just a beautiful sharky mackerel on this occasion. Hey, as he spit the hook. <laughs> That's Ooh. cool, I'll just throw him back. Yeah, eh? yeah. Go beautiful sharky mac. Off he goes. How cool is that? This huge big, I think it's a trout. Oh, it's actually a red bass. Came up behind it. Boom! Jumped on. Oh, that's awesome. Beautiful red bass. All right, quick update. Something crazy's happened. Jump in the water and there's doggies. There's a school of doggies. So, France never got one. There's going to be a bit of an operation here, but we're going to try and do a drift for doggies. We've got this old float line, oh, old bit of rope that washed up on the beach that we picked up the other day. So that's going to be the float line. See if we can spot lock on a spot and dive down and hopefully the doggies play nice. It'd be so cool if we land a doggy out of the trailer boat. <laughs> Have enough punch. Oh, we were agonizingly close just to be able to chase doggies like that with Fran out of the trailer boat. That was just unreal. We've normally got to travel far into the Pacific to have um, have sessions like that. So that was sick. Now yeah, the plan is we're up on this shallow reef edge here. Uh, we're just gonna catch some dinner. One rule Fran's put on is that we can't spear or eat something we've already eaten, so no coral trout. Sure enough, as soon as we get in, we're greeted by some really nice sized coral trout. Normally, these guys would be right up the top of our target list, but today, sticking by the rules, we show them a little bit of mercy and continue on in search of some different species. But these tasty crayfish are never overlooked. So after checking this one's not a female, I take no chances and spear it to come home for dinner. Bluefin trevally are generally only found on the outer reefs here in Australia, and in my opinion, they're one of the best eating trevallies you can get. So that's another species for us on the great adventure. Definitely worth the trip out. Um, can finally tick that off the bucket list. All right, on the menu tonight, we have got crayfish. That's gonna be done up in garlic butter. So first thing, you just want to butterfly your cray. Smack him straight down the middle with a machete or a sharp Victor Knox knife. And then that's how he's gonna sit on the fire. Sunny side up so he can cook in his own juices. And we'll add a little bit of this good stuff. Pre-chopped garlic. Once again, generous amount. It's showtime. Come on over to the kitchen. Just 
straight off the coals. Gallic butter crayfish. Perfect timing as the sun sets. I wish you could taste this at home. I think it's going to be bloody sensational, but I'm going to have to leave you go and rip into it myself. Mm. Mm, get it mm. in there. Mm. <laughs> and sunset. We've just ducked around the back of one of the islands um, where we're out of the wind, but it's blowing about 25 knots out there. So we're decided to ride the afternoon off. We're going to have a hell of a feast. We've got uh, coral trout each. differently today we've been eating for the past 10 days just fish straight on the grill but we're gonna do them in a bit of breadcrumbs on a pan on top of the fire so these ones are actually gonna get filleted so there it is that coral trout all filleted up this is all we're gonna go a little bit of breadcrumbs on top do feel a bit fancy with this sort of mixture this is what we eat at home the last couple of days friends put a rule on us that we can't take coral trout we've been trying to eat like a different um, either a different species or a different type of fish every day. But I got in the water and right underneath the boat was these two perfect sized coral trout. And I'm like, oh, you friend, if you don't shoot them, I will. So, um, yeah, long story short, coral trout for dinner tonight. It was a bit cold and windy and rough. We'll go back to um, being a bit more selective in the next couple of days. Breadcrumb mix straight on there. Generous amount. Shake this all up and then straight on the Straight on the hot pan. This all looks very sophisticated. I feel like we're moving up in the world with the pan. Did you put the garlic in the mixture? Yeah. The garlic's gone in to the naan bread pre-cooking. This is going to be so good, man. Yeah. Just slop it right in there, eh? <laughs> I like the butter to pan ratio and it's spot on. Good lad. Sure. Sliced potatoes entering the oil arena. We're gonna have fish, chips and garlic naan bread. <laughs> Been less than three days. <laughs> Now folks, we do have something to get very excited about this afternoon. Breaking out the premium Shiraz two litre bottle, two litre cask, should I say, out of, yes, six dollar cups. Wonder what the rich people are doing. <laughs> Thanks. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. And that's last night's one, which is now a pillow. <laughs> Old trout's going on. It's a perfect little cooking fire, friend. That's looking pretty good. All right, serve her up, master chef. So what do we have here? We have... Coral trout burger, and the burger is made of garlic naan bread and butter. and butter, or garlic butter naan bread, I should say, and chips. Fish burger and chips, back to basic style. I haven't even tried it yet, but if you catch the fish yourself from the Great Barrier Reef and you eat it in a location like this, I don't think you can go wrong. <laughs> Fran here's just cooking up a bit of brekkie. What do you got there for us this morning, Fred? 
Perfect. Perfect. Follow her for more recipes. That is um, some crispy, crispy coated corn. Now it's been some devastating news actually. We opened up our little dry box this morning. Um, it's day 11 or 12 of our camp. We're meant to be out here for six weeks to two months and all of our corns had expired. We'd sort of allowed for one corn a day, but we didn't check the expiry dates. And who would have thought they've all gone off and they stink. We even tried eating them, but they're just not edible. They went from being my favorite um, staple in the diet we were eating here to absolutely disgusting. So anyway, friends just sacrificing the corns to the food gods. It does mean we are now relying on more than ever catching our own fish from the ocean. If you've just tuned in, we are doing a trip up the east coast of Australia, living out of a little boat for about two months, um, living from the ocean. So we're trying to eat different things every day, whether it's fish or crayfish, squid, different mollusks. It's been going pretty well. Um, but this morning we're fresh out of tucker and we need to go spear fishing. So we'll see you in there. Favorite fish ever, that is a footballer coral trout, but they're still going on with a rule. No coral trout, they're too easy to shoot, so we're hunting for more elusive, more difficult reef species. <coughs> Big eye sea grip or boo. They are so cunning and they always keep their distance from you. They're so frustrating to hunt, but they're the ones we're after today. We're gonna to sort of test ourselves and see if we can nail one of these cunning and smart fish. In order to get a shot at them, you've got to be really sneaky like hide in caves or make noise on the bottom and all these different types of tricks so let's see how we go.
one of the smart buggers. That was such a fun hunt. This round, Mr. Blackton. Yeah, I know. There he is, right here. Cheeky little bugger. Cheeky bugger put me on the fins. Hello, normally the black tip reef sharks are nothing to worry about. But um, as I was swimming away, just bang, bit me right on the fin. He came right at me and just hit my, hit my carbon fiber fins again. The whole reason it was chasing me though is because I was swimming with this and we're gonna do fish and chips. So first step, Still at the moon. That flesh is so fresh, it's twitching as I'm filling it. There you go, a fillet of moo. Yesterday, we enjoyed so much cooking on the pan. It was the first time in two weeks we've cooked on the pan, uh, but it was bloody good. We're gonna try to recreate that. Boned, skinned, ready for the pan. Bread crumbed moo, Fran's loving it in the hot seat. We've got two fires going here at the moment. This one here with all the wind, our cooking fire was just going out. So this here is to get some good coals going, top up that fire. Hey, fish and chips again for lunch today. I know it's pretty similar to what we had yesterday, but we, um, we're really enjoying the novelty of cooking on a, thanks Fran. Ta-da, that was easy. <laughs> really enjoying the novelty of cooking on a pan. We are going to go for a bit of a fish, so if you like fishing, stay posted after lunch. Hopefully we'll have a red hot session, hopefully we can catch something off the rocks here. Just going for a little bit of a walk here and duck around the side of this rock and these birds spooked and scared the absolute daylights out of me and just got this cool little nest here. I'm not gonna get too close, but how perfect is that for a little bird's nest and those cute little eggs. And then mama can just stick her head up, watch the sunset. Right on sunset, this would be prime. Got the camera aimed perfect, so you, whenever you're ready, you just catch him. Three, two, one, oh, 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 not today. It's the end of day 12, I think, and by this stage, we've um, sort of forgotten what day it is, forgotten what time it is, and just this long in nature is such a good thing. Go for a walk on the beach, enjoy your sunset, you'll, um, you'll feel a lot better for it. Cheers, see you next time.